You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen, explaining the possibilities in your love life and examining your mantourage dating experiences. I am here to help you do life and love on your terms by tipping the scales of love permanently in your favor. So don't forget to text this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends and let's get started. Hello there, single smart female. It's your romantic fairy godmama coming to you with a single smart female listener question. Now, this listener question comes all the way from Alabama, Alabama, United States. Yes, it does. And Miss Self Saboteur writes Dear romantic fairy godmama, I've been in this unfortunate self sabotaging relationship loop for quite some time. I find a guy attractive and I start liking him, and then without fail, I reach out to him first via phone calls, social media, whatever, and continue to be the one to pursue interest. I like to think of myself as confident, independent woman who knows what she wants and is just a communicator, but this loop has not been successful for me. Logically, I know it's a problem and logically know what I should do, but physically and psychologically can't bring myself to back off or play it cool or let him pursue me. It's like I'm constantly swimming upstream. I'm not sure. Please help. Okay, Miss Self Saboteur, I am here to help. It's it's me, your romantic fairy godmama, and I am here to save the day. Okay, so this, you're right, is definitely a self sabotaging pattern, especially in dating. Now, why is that, and how do you stop it? The first thing I want you to know is that the pursuing thing is a very historically masculine energy, and there is nothing wrong with a woman who pursues per se, but it's not, the guys that are usually super receptive to it aren't necessarily the ones that we're long-term attracted to unless you do a lot of work internally to kind of switch that. Now, it doesn't mean it's not possible. You can absolutely pursue. It's not something I recommend because I want women to learn how to be in what's referred to as a feminine energy. Now, there are a lot of different ideas out there of what it means, but feminine energy is basically an energy of receiving. And if you're pursuing, you cannot be receiving, which tells me if it's not working out for you, you're being asked by your higher power to learn how to receive, okay? And that's truly, truly an important thing in life and a very powerful place to be. Because yeah, we can go out there and we can kick ass and take names and I want you to do all that. Learning how to receive is going to be even more powerful than all the kicking ass and taking names shit. Okay, so let's take that in. So when you are the one who is constantly pursuing, setting up dates and contacting first, then you know, like you mentioned, you're already sabotaging yourself. Now, number two, this is so important. Mantraj dating, you need a great online dating profile, you know, and great photos that and this profile needs to be authentic, fun, well put together profile. So let me just give you a debriefing. If you're doing a whole bunch of selfies and shit like that, you're already starting off your mantourage dating experience with skewed results, okay? Women I work with get actual online dating photos done. Yes, of course, they have candids and things like that, but there is an art to putting together a great online dating profile. And so not only do you start with the photos and getting those done right, then you move into actually putting a profile together that, like I mentioned, it's authentic, it's fun, it's engaging, and it attracts higher quality men. And it attracts more of them so that, hint, hint, you can stop focusing on that one guy. Because when you're focusing, then you start doing things to try to make stuff happen instead of receiving and allowing it to happen. So you need a great online dating profile. That's an absolute bare minimum. Now, I'm going to let you know and let every woman know out there, I know that online dating, you definitely can meet your forever guy online. But a lot of times when women are having a lot of fun, the online part is really for practice. And you should do it regardless if you want to meet somebody online or not, because you get to practice and learn how to mantourage date. It's the best in-field research. Now, when I say infield, meaning you learning the stuff up front and then you move it to in person, but it is absolutely 100% the easiest way to practice all the things that you need to know and learn with mantourage dating. And if you want to start the process of learning how to mantourage date, go to mantouragedating.com and you'll get a free 
three-day class with me. Now, the next part is, and this is something I do with women, is you have to actually learn what's the art of great messaging and conversation and qualifying a man before you go out on a first date with him. Too many women are going instantaneously because men say, they say shit like, oh, you know, messaging is just one dimensional and it's just this and it's just that. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't learn how to A, take men on your pace and B, learn how to qualify them better before you actually go out on a first date, this conversing and this great messaging, if you learn how to do this, it also stimulates the excitement between the two of you. Okay, it makes a first date, like a a really great first date, 10 times more possible. Not only that, you're already setting up the foundation through this authentically fun communication that you have a lot more potential with somebody versus the, oh, let's just go assess chemistry real quick because, you know, he just might turn out to be this and the guys are thinking the same thing. And that numbers game, if it was working, we'd have just countless success stories about it, but we don't. Women in general are really fucking frustrated with dating. And it's because they're conceding to this very masculine approach of playing the numbers game. And let's just, let's go ahead and get this over with. And you've already set yourself up to fail when you say in your head, let's just get this over with. Okay. Dating is meant to be fun. And it's also meant, again, like we mentioned before, to be something that you're receiving in your life, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. So learning the art of great messaging and conversation with men is really important. And if you can't have a great conversation with him beforehand, before you go out on a first date, something that actually intrigues you, I don't really care as much what his photos look like as I do as whether or not, I mean, he can be the hottest of the fucking hotties. But if he can't engage with you, he's a fucking no, all right? On a first date, don't waste your time. That's how. If you're going to disqualify men, you should disqualify them there first instead of waiting to get to the first date to do so, okay? Next, number four. So playing it cool, just FYI, it's a choice. It's a habit. You're more than capable. you telling yourself that you're not capable just because you're leaning into these bad habits. You know, that's like saying that, hey, I can't learn how to drink water. I'm just not capable of doing it. And it's bullshit. It's a story that we tell ourselves to reaffirm our bad behaviors. And you're a badass, powerful woman. And I can guarantee you, you've created other habits in your life that you're very proud of and you love to do. And so you're gonna do the same stuff here. You're gonna create a great habit of that you're not the one consistently reaching out first. And in fact, for a while, I'm gonna lean you into not reaching out at all first, okay? Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with women being able to reach out to men. I don't want to give that idea that in order to be in your feminine energy, you always have to be the one who waits for him. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is that women have developed this hyper reaction to dating because they're just uncomfortable. It's not about their confidence. It's not about anything. It's just they're uncomfortable and they want to make things happen because you know, waiting on him triggers insecurities in her. And that stuff, if you want to rewire those insecurities, the only fucking way to rewire insecurities is by the habits and how you show up in life. The habits you have and the way you show up with men. And there's where we get in trouble because so many of us, we say we're confident, we say we're this, but then we have really, really shitty patterns and habits with men that we are unwilling to redress because it's just uncomfortable to have to go through the growing pains of doing it differently. There's also a very good chance, like if this is your go-to all the time, A, I'm going to guess you don't really have a mantraage that you're developing at this point and you're just talking to one guy at a time, but there's also a really good chance that you don't have a ton of excitement in the rest of your life. And if the rest of your life is all work and no play and you're just banking on your dating life being fun, your dating life, let me say a disclaimer, your dating life is supposed to be a lot of fun. But when you hinge on that being your only outlet for fun in your life because you haven't set up, you know, great connections with your friends and adventures and all those other things, then you're really screwing yourself in your dating life because you're making him responsible for all the fun and excitement and all all that good stuff in your life. And that shit just doesn't work, okay? Men are really drawn to, like the really high quality men are super drawn to women who are great at already having a wonderful time in their life and who are ambitious and kick ass and who really will take life 
you know, by the metaphorical balls or ovaries and take all that they want out of it. That men are super, super attracted to those type of women. Now we hear all the time, you know, men aren't attracted to strong women. No, the problem is, is that these same strong women, if they're having problems with dating, they're so uncomfortable with receiving that men have no place in their life. Now, reminder, I say it over and over again. Do we need a man? No, we don't fucking need a man, okay? We don't need a man. But most women want one in their lives. And that's okay to admit too. But you, as a strong, ambitious, kick-ass woman, have to be the one to, you know, make a place for him to be in your life. And you can't do that if you're the one who's always is the aggressor and the pursuer and doing all things. And so you have to learn that specific energy of learning how to receive, which is what I work with a lot on my clients. So they learn how to engage with men differently. So that receiving process, yeah, they're going to have some growing pains, like I mentioned before, on learning how to receive. But on the same page, it starts to feel like they're really in control in the receiving process. And that's the fun catch there that is necessary to how to learn. Now, Mantourage dating and eventually your eventual relationship are something you're supposed to fold into your life. It's not something that you're supposed to consistently execute. If you're consistently executing, that's again a very masculine paradigm. And that's something I want you to shift out of. It's something that you bring into your life, not something that you have to dread and not something that you have to go for all the time. And in fact, with, when women start working with me in Secret Society, I tell them the first two months, that's the front loading of it. There's a lot more of the actual execution at the beginning as they're getting certain pieces ready. But then mantra dating, it's a lifestyle. It becomes a lifestyle. And then your eventual relationship from that becomes a lifestyle and not something that you constantly have to execute on because you have enough of your hotness to actually execute on already. I don't want this to be another thing that you have to do in your life. Again, there is front loading. There is stuff you have to do at the beginning, but it's not something that continues that way. It's something that you learn how to do. And as you're learning it, you fold it into your life. And then the universe or your higher power provides you with all these amazing opportunities. And when that happens, you start to feel that shift, that whole swimming upstream thing becomes null and void. Okay, lover girl, it's time for the final thought on today's show. Sabotaging your love life is an active choice you make repeatedly, which is why you have to actively choose to do things differently with mantraage dating. Hey, lover girl, don't forget to subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app, as well as share this episode with all of your single smart girlfriends. And if you are ready to walk permanently in the adored woman world and create the love life that you really want instead of the shit that they say that you have to settle for, then listen up. Women, who get what they want, search out the resources they need in order to make it happen. This is why you found me, and now it's time to make some badass, magical decisions in your dating and love life. No more half-assed decisions based on false information. No more half-assed dating and constant worry about whether or not you'll hear from him again. No more sustaining yourself on scraps of romantic attention or no attention at all. It's time to call BS on all the haters out there that say smart, successful women are destined to be single. It's time to invest in yourself with the only complete dating experience that has direct access to me and is put together exclusively for women like you. Meet me at secretsocietyofadoredwomen.com for all of the details, including pricing, structure for our time together, and to schedule your application interview. See you there.